In this video, we are gonna go over the five things that you get wrong in the gym, they're halting your progress, they're stopping you from getting the gains, and we're gonna cover them right now. <laughs> so this is Biceps and Banter, I am Dan, this is Mike. He's the weird one. If it's your first time here and virgin. you're a virgin, you're a consider virgin. hitting that subscribe button. I'll take it. We do <laughs> we do videos all about training, nutrition. We do the odd vlog here and there and quite a few full days of eating have been known to occur and on And eating channel. challenges. Yeah, eating challenges specifically. Did one yesterday. So if you like all that sort of stuff, hit subscribe, let us know you're joining the crew and let's get going on this video. Point one. Point number one is that you focus too much on trying to be perfect with your exercise selection. So you go in there, you might have a plan, you might not, you might be one of those people that decides the plan. If you do, you might have bench press written down, the bench press is taken, it's Monday, all the guys are in there, Shit. they're on the bench, what do you do? Shit. Well rather than waiting 30 minutes for Billy Big Bollocks to get off the bench from doing his quarter reps, you just go and do dumbbell bench. But he has got his beats on over his hood. He has, he has. And his Otomix as well. Yeah. And he's only benching 40 kilos, but he's hard. People so. are still doing that. People are still wearing the beats over the hood, by the way. Yeah. I've paid 300 pounds for that sound quality. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of this good sound quality. <laughs> Do you not want to make this worse and all muffled? Yeah. Like, Do you know why what? Would I want this sound it? quality is way too good for my liking. <laughs> Let's put my hood up and put the beats over the top. Just so you can see I'm wearing it. So while, while you're waiting for that dickhead, yeah. rather than waiting 30 minutes while he's trying to do that and not letting you jump in on the sets, just do something else. You can do a chest press machine. A chest press machine. You ever use one? Yeah. <laughs> or you can do dumbbell bench. You can even do any sort of variation that works your chest in that plane of motion. It's just a push. Whether you do it with the barbell, dumbbell, you're still gonna get the same level of work. Yeah, it doesn't in matter. Your chest. There's no right or wrong movement. Again, if a squat rack's are taken, do something like a leg press, a multi-joint movement. Don't do a leg which press at all. Just or, or don't do legs, yeah. That's even better. Do arms. If the squat rack is taken, do arms. That's, that's, that's the rule it. I live by. And that's it. That's the rule so I make sure by. you go at the busiest time. <laughs> so there's no right or wrong exercise. I've been asked before when I program for people, oh, why isn't this in? Or why isn't that in? It's like, you don't have to squat perfect, yeah. or deadlift yeah. or bench or do pull-ups or do barbell shoulder press. You don't have to do all of those every time you um, write a training block. You, you can change it out. And again, like Dan says, for one week, if you change your flat bench press for a dumbbell press, negligible. Yeah, the, the loading's probably not transferable, so you, you you might be guessing slightly, but you're still working your chest. As long yeah. as you're going to failure or close to failure, you're still going to see an, ad, uh, an, an, <laughs> an adaptation response. But the other thing as well is, on our next point, which we're going to go to in a second, is that if you're keeping a track of your lifts, it's not hard to just sub that out and put another exercise in. You're still going to work at your near maximal loads. You know what loads you're going to be lifting so that you make progress. So there's really no excuse to be waiting around half an hour for someone else to pretend like they know what they're doing when you could just be cracking on with another exercise. Anyway, let's go to point two. <laughs> All right, so point number two. Just a mechanical monster. Point number two. I don't know where he's gone. Oh yeah. Point number two is that you do not use. Don't wobble. Shut up. Stop. Stop pushing me. Don't Fall wobble. Over. Point number two is you don't have a logbook. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Be car. Yeah. It's not proof of ownership as well, that, by the way. Um, you don't have a logbook. You don't log your lifts. You don't know what sets, how many sets you've done, how many reps, what weight you've been lifting. So every time you go in there, you're starting over again and thinking, oh, did I use this number before? Was I on this one before? Yeah, you, you don't, don't know. possibly know. You don't know. Uh, it's just guessing and all, all you're doing is just repping out to failure, making it hurt, making it burn. And like, whilst there may be some small benefit in that, yeah. um, the main driver of hypertrophy is progressive overload. And you oh. don't actually know if you're overloading um, from one week to the next. No. You might have lifted more last week, you might have lifted more this week, but you don't know. No. Just track your lifts, track what weight you used, how many reps did you hit? Okay, I got eight reps on 30 kilos. Next week I'm gonna to try to I get wish. nine reps. I wish. You know, um, and that's how you do it, because you might go, oh, did I use 30s, did I use 28s? Did I get eight reps, did I get seven reps? Yeah. Like, and you don't know. Um, and that feeling as well of knowing that you've logged the lifts and knowing that you are increasing in strength, it gives you that motivation to keep going and to go again and you stay yeah. more on point with your diet because some weeks you can go in and think, you, had a, you think, oh, I had a shit week with my training this week, I don't feel great. But actually, you could have just lifted up the wrong fucking weights for all yeah. you know. And that's why you felt weak. Yeah. And actually, it's nothing to do with that. It's the fact you just didn't remember what weights you were on. It's always, um, it's always good to do as well because it brings out your own competitive nature in yourself. It's like, yeah. right, I'm going to beat what I did last week. I'm going to beat myself. Right? Um, well, don't and, beat yourself too much, mate. I know, mate. It's red raw down there. 
What's the most you've had in a day? <laughs> oh, definitely more than three. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the most I clocked up when I was a teenager was 11. That's a bit better. Oh, God, I've got yeah. gravel all over my knees. <laughs> Not for the first Not time. Not for the first time. <laughs> anyway, that's, the, that's that point done anyway. So we're going to go now because we're getting cramp. Yeah. Um, because we don't train legs hard enough. Um, no. So yeah. This counts, doesn't it? Yeah, this is, this is leg day. Sweet. Join us for next point. Volume recommendations. So number three. Number three. Sorry. Number three. Point three. Point three. Volume. You either probably don't do enough, or you do far too much. Uh, you either sit in one of the camps, your camp. And what? Something like that. Nothing. Nothing's wrong with that. Usually you're uh, like a powerlifting zeller and you do fuck all. Do you um, like a rep and that's your session? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, you've got to go ham and do all the reps, all the sets, drop set, yeah. triple drop set, super set, fucking all the sets, badminton set, Maybe China so. tea set. Box set. Yeah. Uh, Netflix set. We don't like the word box around here. Yes, yeah, the thing with volume is that you see people all the time and they kind of, they either have like a chest day and they'll do 30 sets on one day on chest and, and then they do their back day and then they do like an ab and calf day and all this sort of shit and do it all in one day and they get they then think oh because it's sore and it hurts the next day that that means they're going to grow yeah not necessarily no. the case you're far better off taking those sets you do over the week and splitting them up into into shorter sessions yeah spread them out so you hit each muscle group roughly every two to three days yeah you, you don't need to be doing too much in one session it's actually a bell curve so you can actually oh. do really no. love the bell you can actually do too much and get diminishing returns. So there's a sweet spot of, of volume. You should be looking at aiming for between 10 to 20 sets on average, roughly for the most, um, for, the, for the majority of people. 10 to 20 sets per body part. So yeah. let's say for example, you're gonna go with 14. You might do seven sets on your first workout of the week, Sec uh, the yeah. second seven on the second workout yeah. of the week. You want to be looking at using the hypertrophy rep range, yeah. which is banded around quite a lot, but it is pretty pretty stable in, in, in the literature. So eight to 12 reps usually allows you to, to use the correct loading and then whilst building up sufficient volume because that, that's going to be enough reps over time. And how many of you calculate, you know, the amount of sets you do over a week? Comment below with, you know, how many sets you try and do for each body part, whether you think about that, because often with a lot of people, they don't think about it. They just kind of maybe do, they do, oh, I'll do back twice a week. It's like, well, what does that even mean? Like, yeah. you need to be knowing the, the rough number of sets you're doing so that you can progress that as well, yeah. because you need to have phases in your program where you go, like, these are my base level of sets, and then two weeks time, I'm gonna do an extra set, yeah. two weeks time, another extra set. And then you get to that point where you kind of overreach, where you getting a bit too slightly too much volume to that point where you're going okay that's enough i need to then deload and then i go down again and then we start again with heavier weights with that lower volume and this is the thing with training is like this is what we do for a job this is how we program for our clients and if you're not doing it for yourself then that you're going to be leaving yourself short in terms of the progress you're making yeah. so comment below how many sets you're doing and we'll try and yeah. give you a rough guide as whether you think that's too much or too little and with the 10 to 20 sets don't be falling to thinking right do you know what well tw i'll do 20 sets yeah on, on everything no, no start with a minimum amount you can get yeah. away with and build up from there exactly that 10 on your stronger muscle groups yeah. 15 on your weaker muscle groups. Don't yep. just go, right, well, I'll do 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yep. Fucking no chance. Just get an idea of the rough volume you're doing, the rough sets a week you're doing, yeah. for each body part, and I promise you, you'll start seeing results if you use the other tips we've gone over and the next tips we're going to go over as well. Point number four. Don't take deloads, mate. I know it sounds kind of intuitive to not do heavy work in the gym. Most people, when they come to work with us, never take deloads. Like, that's pretty much standard across the board. Um, we're pretty bad for it. Not as bad as we used to not be. Not as though. bad as we used to not be. We do tend to take slightly lighter weeks, or like, there's almost things that come up that mean that we can only train maybe twice, three times a week, and it's take almost care. a deload in itself. The reason why you need to be deloading, right? Let's say if you are going through a 12 week training cycle. Yes, you might be able to get to week six, um, pushing, 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 but at some point, yep. you're going to be too fatigued, under-recovered, that you're then not going to be able to push and progress yep. th through the last six weeks of that block, and you might actually even start to regress. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you'd have deloaded, say, at week four, or at even week six after week five, if you've just taken a week there to uh, recover, almost like reset things. Yeah. You like that word? Do you like um, to reset? Press but, the button, reset it. But yeah, just recover, dissipate any fatigue, yeah. and then you come back in week seven, and then you set up then again for another productive five weeks of training until the end of that 12 week training block. So it's almost like a springboard. Yeah. You're just sort of 
holding yourself for a week and then you go right bang and then you feel fresher and then you're able to beat what you did in the first half of that training block. The best way to look at it is to go look if you start a training block 100% after the first week your total energy reserves or whatever you want to term it just a made up term is down to 90% right and then let's say that each session you do you go down from 90% to 85 and then you recover to 87 then you go down to 82 and it kind of is it goes that way where you get to a point where you're probably about 70% recovered all over and if you carry on trying to train at your maximum you're just going to get to that point where you can't lift the same weights and you can't do that sort of thing anymore and with deloads people assume you have to just not go to the gym not true the best thing to do with a deload is to either cut your volume in half or reduce the weight you're lifting in the gym and do the same amount of volume they're the two best ways to recover some people if they go on holiday or whatever you can plan in deloads where you actually take a complete week off training and they're probably useful every every six months to have like a good week off training completely but in that deload week you still go in and train the movement that's fine you might use a little bit less load what i prefer to do with a lot of people is keep the load quite high but maybe just do one working set rather than three or four um, that can be a way that people feel like they've still done something but they can see the benefit and actually go, actually i'm going to recover this week because i haven't done the same amount of volume so there's more than one way to deload don't assume we're telling you not to go to the gym yeah. and don't try and do anything drastically different because you'll get sore from it do the same pro same plan you've been doing just less volume or less load and you will benefit from that in the coming weeks We've got loads more of these videos to come in the future. But if you've got anything that you want us to talk about, stick it below. So if you like that video, please hit subscribe. See you later. Bye.